Marshall Harris here. The Bears have found their next head football coach, and they didn't have to go too far to find him. Defensive coordinator at the age of 51, Matt Eberflus, is going to be their next head coach after spending the last four years running the Colts defense. Joining me now is Matt Zahn. And Matt, uh, this is a, a quick turnaround. Uh, it was just a couple of days ago that we were talking about Ryan Poles being their new general manager. He wasted no time. The same day he interviews uh, Jim Caldwell and Quinn, uh, he, he's seen a lot of guys in a short period of time. It makes me think he was prepared to talk to all three of these guys uh, before deciding on Eberflus. Yeah, it, it sort of sounds like Poles had these three guys among his groups of finalists that he wanted for the head coaching job even before he got the general manager gig. So it's not surprising that he moves quickly on it. I know some people would have liked maybe him expanding the list a little bit to some other guys not among the group that the Bears interviewed when Poles wasn't part of it. But it, it just sure does sound like this was his decision. And yes, as you you mentioned he does move pretty quickly to get this done so he, he makes the decision to go with a defensive minded head coach some things we could tell you about uh, this this coach is that he's never been a head coach at any level spent actually the first 17 years coaching at the collegiate level between um, Toledo uh, he was also at Missouri and that's when he came into the NFL as a linebackers coach for the Cleveland Browns after two years there he moved on to Dallas uh, spending seven years as their linebackers coach and then four years at Indianapolis where he's really been kind of a culture guy. The thing about it is he was actually hired to be part of Josh McDaniel's staff in the last <laughs> second. Josh McDaniel said, no, I'm staying in New England. And now he's had four years where he's not only been the defensive coordinator, but kind of a in a coach of the defense role because Frank Reich doesn't really touch the defense. Yeah, that's a good point. And, and wherever Eberflus has been, the defense has been good. You mentioned he was at Missouri. You probably remember those great Missouri defenses back then uh, with the Cowboys. They did good. And then especially when he got to the Colts, they were a really bad defense before he got there and a consistently good one once he did get there. So that is a good sign that it's at least on the defensive side, he has had success everywhere he's been. Top 10 defense uh, last year. Uh, he's been one of the best at takeaways, something the Bears really struggled with last season. They had 16 takeaways as a team. That's less than one per game. Meanwhile, this guy's uh, got the Colts with 33 takeaways, just one off the league league, uh, second overall in the NFL. And it's really been a defense based on hustle because they don't have maybe the huge playmakers that when you look at the Bears defense, you think of when you look at uh, Khalil Mack and, and company. So I, I think this is a situation where maybe he gets the most out of what Whatever the Bears do have next season because the roster is a whole other conversation we're going to have <laughs> talk, when you talk about switching defense. Yeah, he seems to be like a, a guy who brings a lot of intensity to the job. Just doing a little research on him, it sounds like his dad was a big influence on him. He, even as a kid, I, his dad's uh, quote to him was, you have to hustle, you have to play as hard as you can every single snap. That was his quote to Matt as a kid playing football, and I guess that's sort of what he lives by his entire life as a coach. So expect hard practices, lots of intensity. I think that's what we're going to get from Matt Eberflus as a head coach. You, you brought that up, and that's a great point. And they actually kind of have that in a metric form. They call them loafs, where they look at the game tape, and if you aren't going maximum effort on every play, you know, that's a loaf for you. And they, they count those up, and that's how you are judged. And judging by what we've seen from a Bears defense that was good under Sean Desai, but obviously had room for improvement. It'll be interesting to see how he has that all out uh, atmosphere and that kind of gut check mentality and brings it to the Bears. I know one thing we've talked about, Matt, is the fact that they did go with a defensive minded yeah. coach in, the, in an offensive era, if you will, in the yeah. NFL. So now the big question becomes, you've got a rookie quarterback, Justin Fields, you know, who just uh, finished up his first season uh, in the NFL, who's going to be the guy who Oof. develops and brings him along? Uh, this is probably the second most hire with this coaching staff is the offensive coordinator. Yeah, I think once you get the head coach, especially when you get a defensive guy, the next most important hire is your offensive coordinator. You're hearing a lot of names out of there, young passing game type guys that could help develop Justin Fields, uh, Mike Kafka, uh, who a former Nord uh, Northwestern player who uh, has been the Chiefs co QB coaching passing, coordinating, coordinating, passing game coordinator. He's one of the names that gets thrown out there. The problem with this is, you know, when you hire one of those young, talented guys to help coach your offense, uh, eventually that guy's going to probably leave for another job. So you have to hope that this guy develops Justin Fields and gets him to a point where he can handle possibly changing to another offensive mind at some point down the road. And, and you look at the, the head coaching name, and we, we had those three finalists, and as you mentioned, 
We wonder if there would be an expanded uh, list of guys that polls would talk to. Yeah. Uh, this doesn't necessarily move the needle, but it seems like people are on board. It's so funny because every time someone is hired as a head coach, people are like, I really like the hire. Or I hate the hire. We don't know <laughs> yeah. anything yet. We, we got to give it time, right? <laughs> right. I mean, you rarely hear somebody get hired as head coach and then a bunch of people come out and tell you how terrible he is. So you're going to hear good things about a guy who's at least gotten to this level. And yet, right, until a guy coaches your team, until the GM gets in there and can actually have that job, you, you don't know. But we expect the teams hiring these guys to know precisely every time. We don't know. He, he, he's got a good track record. It seems like he's a good leader of men. He's obviously been great on the defensive side. If he can hire a good offensive guy, there is reason for optimism. But as you said, we, we never really know until you get out in the field and you do it. Well, hopefully we'll start finding out soon once the Bears uh, make it official and uh, give us a time for a press conference right. so <laughs> that we can talk to both Ryan Poles and to Matt Eberflus, find out more about the dynamic of the hiring process and also what the plan is going forward. Until then, uh, from Matt Zahn, Marshall Harris saying, you know, follow us on CBS, uh, Chicago, CBS uh, News Chicago where we will keep you up to speed, plus reports, you know, four, five, six, and ten over the airwaves.